Hi, my name is Hannah, and today we're interviewing Ryan. Originally from Scotland, Ryan is a forex trader and a YouTuber based in Indonesia. Today he talks about his background and then he gives us his view on the impact of the pandemic. This podcast channel is about you, successful international entrepreneurs, successful expats, successful investors, sponsored by HCJ.tax. Thank you very much, Ryan. I appreciate your time. Great to see you again. Great to see you, Darren. So please introduce yourself to the very few people who don't know who you are. Sure, guys, thank you. So my name is Ryan McInnes. I get called Ryan Mac. Um, I currently am a very junior trader for a forex company over in Jakarta, uh, Kudman Megatama. Uh, with loads of time, my boss is very chilled. Basically, as long as you do the work, you, 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 know, you can crack on if you have a laptop and mm-hmm. crack on from wherever, which is good in this climate, you know, because the corona, COVID. Uh, uh, my background before that, I was uh, in the British Army as a forward observer. I'd done multiple frontline tours as a forward observer in Afghanistan. Uh, I then got out and I worked doing close protection, uh, like a bodyguard close protection, however you want to know it. Uh, and that was for two years in Afghanistan again and then one year in Iraq. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, Afghanistan was looking after not the French ambassador, but the, the guy below him. Mm-hmm. And also the other contract was a two-star American general who was in charge of what's called uh, what do you call it? the Corps of Engineers. So mm-hmm. you know when Americans go around, they're building hospitals, they're building schools, and you just take the general around and let them see these places, mm-hmm. that kind of stuff. Uh, Iraq was just oil workers, so you were really just a taxi driver with a gun. It, that was pretty <laughs> mundane, pretty, mm-hmm. pretty, pretty boring. It was very safe, and nothing, you know, nothing was really happening. Um, after that, I came here, and now uh, in my spare time, um, <coughs> pardon me. Um, yeah, I think it was about a year ago. You and I were having dinner um, with with Sam, and mm-hmm. we we were discussing that I was wanting to make like a YouTube channel. Yeah, uh, and it was about survival because I was actually really missing the army, and I thought, oh, you know what? I, I kept having these thoughts to rejoin. I thought, don't be so stupid, you know? <laughs> Why would you do that? And there. Uh, and so then I thought, right, what can I do to occupy my time? It's going to give yeah. me that same kind of feeling, you know? Mm-hmm. So then I just started doing trips to the jungle, started recording it, started putting it on a uh, YouTube. Mm-hmm. Then I met another YouTuber who's, he's like the, kind of, the Steve Irwin of Indonesia. Uh, and he just, mm-hmm. he gave me a point and said, you should do this, you should do that. He then done a collaboration with me, helped me grow up. And like four months later, I went from 71 subscribers to like nearly 400,000. So it's, yeah, it's just been incredible. And I picked up sponsorship with an American outdoor company called Loa Alpine mm-hmm. and a Swedish knife company, Morak Knife. So it's just pretty cool how it's all kind of like unfolding, you know, just from a hobby. Wow, that's amazing. Yeah. So, I mean, you started off in the UK and you've seen much of the world and now you're in Indonesia, basically on the other side of the world from the West. What do you think, and, and you being successful in, in new media with, with your YouTube channel as a YouTuber, what would you say would be the secrets to your success and anybody who's looking at you and looking up to you, uh, what, what should they be <clears throat> considering? Okay. So I'll tell you, it definitely wasn't from, you know, my education or anything. My education is very normal. I left school. I've done my exams, but I left school when I was 15. I just, uh, I'm the type of person school was just never really for me. Uh, it just never ever clicked with me. Um, so it's definitely not from education. I think uh, a couple of key factors is I really I'm just willing to give anything a try if it's if I like it. So that that's another key point. If I like it, so there's many things that I could have. A, well, in fact, I do have a mate just now who who went from you know literally being broke to making a million dollars in eighteen months, and he's like, I'll share it with you, and it's awful. Like for me, I really hate doing it. I'm like, ah. Oh. Mm. So even though he's made so much money, it's still if it's not an alignment with, oh, I really love this. I have a passion for it. Mm-hmm. I've learned that for, for me, uh, it's really quite important if I've been stuff off that I don't have a passion for. Because mm-hmm. what happens then if I just keep working at it, working at it, I put a lot of like bad energy into it. And at the, a year later, all I've done is just waste a load of time when I could have mm-hmm. followed something that I loved and put a lot of good positive energy into it and really ran with it. 
So that's one of the things. Um, and going back to the first uh, statement, uh, I'm not afraid to try something new. If I think, hey, that's mm. a good idea. And then, of course, you know, sorry, you know what it's like. You get loads of kind of negative comments. Oh, someone else is already doing that. You know, oh, it's too, it's too much of uh, an industry already. And you know, it's like, come on. And you, you always get the negative comments from everywhere. Mm-hmm. But I'm very easy to block them out. And if I want to do it, I'm, I guess I'm stubborn in a way that I'm just going to ignore them and mm-hmm. crack on and, and give it a try. So that's definitely one of them. Um, and I think another thing is. I really talk to everybody, so I genuinely don't care if someone is the CEO of HSBC or if someone is a Gojek driver. You know, I will literally talk to anyone. Mm -hmm. And it turns out to have paid dividends because Mm -hmm. one of the things that really propelled my YouTube channel was Panji Patuolang collaborating with me. Uh, Panji's background, he's just a a little guy who he literally came from like nothing, like a shack in, in his village, his house. He recently posted, he just bought a new house. His old one was a shack that was literally nearly fallen down. Every day they woke up thinking, there's a roof still on, you know? Mm-hmm. Uh, and now he's just bought a house with a pool and blah, blah, blah. And it's you really never know who you're talking to. And he's still mm-hmm. a nice, lovely little humble guy who I met on a boat going to one of the Thousand Islands and I just started talking to him. Didn't mm-hmm. know anything about him. And then just by being friendly to him, you know, he's, yeah. he's like, hey, come and do it with me. And he's really helped me. Wow. So that, that's another thing. You never know. Mm-hmm. who someone is you know you might look at them and think oh he's just a go-drink driver but he may not be you know he really mm-hmm. may not and you just can't tell so I think the fact that I, will, I always talk to anyone and I'm kind to anyone regardless of you know who they are then that that helps mm, okay <laughs> so being friendly and <laughs> being extroverted and welcoming of everybody extroverted maybe. welcoming yep and, uh, and looking at other so for YouTube you know specifically looking at the YouTube stuff uh, it's also trying to find out what makes YouTube like recommend your videos. Why do some mm. people make two similar videos and one gets heaps of likes and one doesn't? It's a mm. lot to do with the background workings of YouTube as well. So I had to kind of work, well, find that out and work it out. I'll work some things out and then other people will tell me bits and bobs. Mm-hmm. And it's about like remembering that and, and making notes of it all so you don't forget it and then completing each stage. <clears throat> okay. All right. So... Okay, so being extrovert, being very uh, <clears throat> precise and almost scientific yeah. about how you approach what you do, uh, not being afraid to take risks, yeah. and being passionate about being what passionate. you Being passionate, yes, I very important. Those, those, those are the things <clears throat> that have come across. So where do you see yourself going from here? Like, Where would you see yourself in five <clears throat> to ten years from now? Yeah, great question. So... I think from here, well, this year, uh, I had planned to quickly smash out. I've done skydiving before, but because I haven't done it for so long, I have to go and smash out the, the course again to requalify the license. So my plan this year was to go away, smash out the, uh, my AFF again, get that license done. Then sorry, I, AFF? Uh, yes, yeah, sorry, accelerated free fall. It's just uh, the license again for your uh, skydiving. Right, okay. And then... I had planned to smash out 200 jumps, maybe within kind of four to six weeks after that, just staying there for a month, smashing them out, mm-hmm. uh, and then moving on to wingsuit flying, just so I could integrate that into my channel and kind of take them to the next level. Mm-hmm. So, um, but I, you know, I don't know what's happening with this economy. I don't know how that's going to happen now. Um, further on this year, again, I was looking to collaborate with the Indonesian Special Forces, uh, they're called Kapasos and Pashkas. And we were just going to do some cool videos where, like, you know, like SAS, are you tough enough kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. They would just chase me through the jungle with dogs, and I'm going to teach people how you You're never going to get away from a dog, but I, I can teach people how you would buy plenty of time so you mm-hmm. keep the dog occupied with certain stuff you do and then while you're running. And then, obviously, when the handler's like, hey, you're wrong, you don't move, the dog's going to chase you again. And then by that time, you've already yeah. done another kind of red herring, you know, so right. stuff like that. But, you know, I can't meet people, so that's putting a bit of a kibosh on it <laughs> just now. Um, <clears throat> so that's actually a good question for now about keeping my channel rolling, you know, while, while we're stuck at home. Um, I went to the back of my mother-in-law's house, which is like semi-jungle. It's about 200 meters, but it looks like the jungle. And I just kind of played around with the camera, so it looked like I was doing jungle treks, but it, it was someone's back garden, basically. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, I've just got a new lizard. Uh, it's a very, very unusual lizard. It's called a sailfin dragon. Uh, it really looks like Godzilla. It has a huge sail on the back of its tail. 
and uh, it's very, very unique. So at least now it means I can do home videos, how you would raise your baby self in Dragon Black, you know? And they're just like warmer videos where I don't need to leave the house. So it's overcome and adapting because you don't want to let your channel die off, which would be, uh, it's very easy to do. And be a nightmare. And how big is it? Just now it is about this size. If you include the tail, it's probably about one foot. Right. Um, but I mean, it will get to about three foot maximum. Okay. Wow, yeah. it still is pretty big. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So, um, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, so I was going to say, and then, you know, the remainder of the year, the next five years, you know, taking the channel forward would be introducing the skydiving, the mm. wingsuit, the collaboration with Indonesian military. Um, if I ever go back to the UK for a holiday, I'm going to introduce, you know, a, a, a Scotland one. We'll go and visit caves and different mountains, blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. um, and, <clears throat> excuse me, I think, over the next five years, I'd really try to like to try and get a big sponsor. So just now, I'm sponsored by a pretty big company uh, called Loa Alpine. It's an American-based outdoor company in Colorado, and a Swedish knife company called Morite Niv. Um, but it's sponsorship whereby like they just give me free kit. You know, anything yeah. I need, anything I need for outdoor stuff, they just give me free. I don't get paid or anything. That, mm -hmm. That's fine. That's great. Um, what I would like to kind of progress to is hopefully get some kind of even if it's not paid sponsorship, it's fine, but some kind of paid sponsorship would be great. Mm -hmm. Or a sponsor who would put me, who would pay for me to go through my skydiving course and my wingsuit course and actually buy the wingsuit and the parachute, like with their company logo. You know, like I would love that if it was, you know, the, the rival to GoPro or you know, Cocopedia, Luat Coffee, whatever, you know, it'd just be, it, that would be great to get that in the next five years. So that is what I'm kind of pushing for trying to do. Hmm. Do you use uh, Patreon? No, what's that? Oh, sorry. It's just some of the YouTubers that I do follow to give you the option uh, of, of supporting them via Patreon because a lot of them have been demonetized because okay. of uh, copyright, whatever. Yep. And so you can support them monthly. I heard about there. that actually. Some guy called J Ho has a channel called J O, J O or something. He was talking to me about that. He said people fun, but I, I didn't know how. I, I think it's more like an American thing, right? But anyone can use it around the world. Yep. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> I hadn't heard about that before. He introduced me, well, he spoke to me about it briefly. That's why I, I recognized the name. But yeah, that, that can happen with YouTube. That's a real nightmare. You can be oh. sitting talking, and the guy on the bench behind you can be drinking a Starbucks, and you, don't, you <laughs> haven't noticed, and, and Starbucks exactly. cups, and, and it's a real yeah. nightmare. You know, that yeah. is a nightmare. Um, yeah. hmm. I nearly get caught, well I did, but I managed to get it fixed. <clears throat> mm -hmm. You have to be careful with copyright free music. Mm -hmm. I would strongly suggest to anyone with your YouTube channel, mm -hmm. use the copyright free music that YouTube already has on there. There's like 30,000 you can use, there's plenty there, wow. and YouTube have already deemed it okay to use. Right. When, you, when you use them, there are ones that you can use, just use it off the bat. And there are other ones that you can use, but while the song's playing, you have to give the creator credit. So you have to say, this is blah, blah, bye, you know, in a little subtitle type thing. You have to do that. I used copyright free music from a total copyright free page. The guy was like, basically, please use my music for all your stuff. <laughs> and then two months later, I got like five copyright claims for the same song in five different videos. And it was taking, it was going to take wow. about eight or 900 bucks off me. And I was like, what? Yeah. Uh, I, check, I checked it out and I mailed them and they were like, oh, I said, look, it specifically says blah, blah, blah. I copied everything he'd done. Oh, okay, that's okay. So what, what happened was mm -hmm. once he, once, like, you know, maybe hundreds of thousands of people around the world were using his uh, views, he sold the rights over to a company oh, who had then yeah. have an algorithm to hunt you down via, you know, via your <laughs> YouTube and, and take your money basically, which is pretty wow. surely. Um, and yeah. so you have to be careful of that. Mm -hmm. It's very simple. Just use YouTube's music that they already have in your okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Sounds good. All right. So we are at a, a critical moment in history. I think <laughs> we've never really, at least in our lifetimes, we've never experienced anything like this before. Yeah. What do you think is going to happen? That's a good question. Well, I mean, there's many positives that, that I feel have came from it. There's people spending more time with their family in this last two weeks than they've ever spent in the last five, ten years, you know? Yeah, yeah. Um, people are realizing you can't eat money. 
you know, people are realizing your employer really doesn't care about you. He will ditch you in a heartbeat. You know, most people lose their jobs two days after or we have a lockdown two days later, no job, see you later. You know, your employer does not care about you. Mm-hmm. So things that I think may come from this is I think more people are going to be in the hot locker and, and think, you know what, I've only just realized that if I don't have a job, then I can't last longer than a week to two weeks with no money coming in. You know, just the way the world is. I'm not mm-hmm. uh, judging anyone. That's just the Absolutely. way a lot of people are these days. Yeah, you're right. Um, mm-hmm. So I think a lot of online stuff where people who maybe wanted to do it in the past have really had a huge kick up the, the backside to be like, right, you need to get this done because you're now in the hot locker, you know? So yeah. I think we're going to see a lot of growth when it comes to people working themselves, maybe internet marketing, blogging, blogging, you know, YouTube. Uh, selling products like a kind of Amazon type page, you know, I, I think loads of these things, e-com, I think loads of these are going to pop up and people are going to try and uh, really push for, for making their own money. I think that's going to be one. Um, I think, you know, a bigger sale, I think maybe companies like the European company uh, countries, sorry, um, the UK, America, mm-hmm. I think they might start to pull away from relying on China for so much, like pharmaceuticals mm-hmm. and stuff, uh, you know, and a lot of goods, I think they might say, you know what, you really had us by the balls there. Uh, we mm-hmm. don't want that to happen again. Let's just mm-hmm. start making more own stuff here so we, we never come into that, you know? Mm-hmm. So I think stuff like that could also happen um, from things that people have noticed that when you need stuff from China and China are like, oh, we actually need this more for us, then they're like, mm-hmm. oh, what we're we, what we gonna do now? You know, and yeah. they've kind of realized they, they never had a, a, a plan B before for this kind of thing. So mm-hmm. I think that's came out in a, in a more of a world side. Mm, I see. How, long, how much longer do you think the lockdown will last? Great question. Yeah. I mean, I think we could be May, June time. I, I think as well, it's very country dependent, you know, um, I think Indonesia haven't really had a peak yet. I think there's a lot more cases than what than what's been said, um, like just unrecorded, and you know, people, there's a, because over here as well we have the religion, uh, mostly Muslims. So when when, they, when someone dies, they're buried within a couple of hours. So you, you're not even going to test how that person died. You know, oh yeah, he had pneumonia. You know, they're just going to think he had the flu, pneumonia, whatever. Mm-hmm. Where it's actually been COVID, and then everyone who's handled the body. They are now potentially contracting it, you know, and, and, and then it gets spreads. Mm-hmm. A lot of people are still totally packing out mosques here. Um, mm-hmm. They've been quite good with not hanging around too much in coffee shops, you know, blah, blah, blah. But they are still packing out mosques. It's like, mm-hmm. oh, wow, you know. I think they're actually packing out mosques more so now. This yeah. virus is here because they're highly re- religious, you know. So it's mm-hmm. that's definitely going to have an effect, I think. Mm-hmm. I actually have a celebrity friend who, who had it. Mm-hmm. Um, she got, you know, she comes from a really good family. She has a lot of money. She has top health insurance, and you know, she was saying your money doesn't help you with this. It's probably one of the only things money doesn't help you with in Indonesia. You know, mm-hmm. she was like, I was put in a horrible room with five other people, a, a prison style toilet. She was in tears. You know, like oh, this is unbelievable. She's never experienced that of course before. And mm-hmm. you know, just it was like, it was like that's another eye opener for this type of pandemic. You know, your, your money can't help you in this. Mm. Kind of thing. Okay. Um, I think it could go on maybe June time. I, mm. I think I think definitely June time. I mean, the UK is getting hammered just now. Maybe at best, maybe end of May if everyone sticks to the rules and you know the the, mm-hmm. the, the rules they imply, you know, distancing and blah blah blah. Um, but yeah, I think it's very country dependent. Mm-hmm. Um, mm. I, don't, I don't know why people wouldn't try. I know there's been various things. I don't know what confuses me with the world on many things is I don't know why we can't just look at places like China, you know, Wuhan and say, right, they've cracked it. But obviously, you know, it mm-hmm. may have started from there, but that's by the by. The point is they've now cracked it. How did you crack it? You know, mm-hmm. what what medications were you giving to people that seemed to work? Even even if they've been trial tested or not, mm-hmm. did it work on, you know, X amount of patients? Yes, yeah. I actually did. Okay, well let's crack on and try it. You know, you, you really have nothing to lose otherwise, I don't think. Mm, I guess in, in, in that case, well, in, in the Wuhan area and in South Korea, Taiwan, Singapore, the countries that have been treated as like examples, yeah. they, from at least from a Western perspective, the whole civil rights thing was kind of put as a secondary concern. Yeah. And, you know, so people <laughs> lost their basic freedoms pretty quickly. 
Yeah. And so I guess there's a resistance in the Western mindset to, to try something like that. But I, I want to go back to the point that you, you made earlier sure. about changes <laughs> in professions and, you know, people becoming more entrepreneurial, self-sufficient, doing yeah. more things online so that if there's another lockdown, they'll be okay because it's online, yeah. which is basically what you have done. Yeah. Because your, your business model is, is very much online, both as a, a, a trader as well as a YouTuber. It's, it's yeah. 100% definitely. Well, unless you're filming, it's all online. Yeah. <laughs> so, so, I mean, that's, that's definitely, that's definitely the way to go. But, uh, I guess in some economies, people can't afford it. Right. Yes. And there's, there's some barriers <clears throat> to getting, you know, whether it's the, the equipment buying, uh, as they say in Indonesia, buying the pulsa to, yeah. go. So do you see that as being an obstacle for people becoming more entrepreneurial? It's a great question. Mm -hmm. I, I do. And again, I'd say it would depend on, uh, you know, how and what they're choosing to do. Mm -hmm. If we just look at the, the YouTube example again, I have a friend, Debbie Inouye. He last week, he just reached a million subscribers. He mm -hmm. records everything from his Oppo phone and yeah. Yeah. everything and he edits it from his mobile phone using wow. an application and yeah. i was absolutely blown away i was like are you serious dead i was like that is <laughs> phenomenal and he's just hit um, and when you watch his videos you're like his videos are great um, wow. everything from i mean his mobile phone i mean it was a juta or two juta you know two thousand uh, sorry two million rupees around there <laughs> and everything from his mobile phone records edits posts the whole shebang and i was like wow i was super impressed by that. I was like, there's literally nothing holding this guy back, you know? Mm -hmm. um, I mean, if you said to me to do that, I'd be like, oh, sack that. That's like, my, my brain would just be like vibrating, you know? <laughs> just, yeah. uh, but I mean, he's done it. Fantastic. Um, depends on the niche. <clears throat> so, mm -hmm. I have a, another YouTube channel called Ryan Mac Reviews, mm -hmm. uh, which is about inter uh, affiliate marketing, online marketing reviews. If anyone is looking to like, if you're sitting there like, like uh, you just said there, Darren, if anyone's watching this thinking, look, I would love to get into that, but I don't want to spend $1,000 on this course and it turns out to be BS. You know, I don't want to spend mm -hmm. 500 bucks on this. It doesn't work. If any of you want to do it, you can jump over to my YouTube channel, uh, Ryan Mac Reviews. Mm -hmm. You'll see me there. And there is one there called uh, the I Am Apprentice, the Internet Marketing Apprentice. And that is where my friend Jono, who was literally on his ass 18 months ago, like getting his mom to send money from the UK to support him, like just until I get my mom, who was working his nuts off, and mm -hmm. now made up his first million dollars in 18 months from doing it. He then, I helped him at a time when he was struggling, and he then returned, returned the favor by saying, look, you know what, I remember you helped me that time, I'm now gonna show you how I made the money. And he, he teaches me step by step, we recorded mm -hmm. six different videos, they're about an mm -hmm. hour long. If anyone wants to try any online marketing, you can watch those videos, they're completely free, and I promise you, if you watch, if you do step-by-step step what it's on them, you will make money online, uh, absolutely. I, I also have made money doing exactly what he said, and it's called um, launch hacking. So you would promote someone's affiliate, but you'd be thinking to yourself, right, how come I don't have, uh, I don't have an email list, so how am I gonna, how am I gonna get people to buy the stuff? Mm -hmm. That's exactly. fine, so you hijack the launch, so there's going to be so many big high ticket people who have like you know, 100,000 emails who are sending them that uh, this promotion out in their email. So people are going to think, right, is this BS or is it good? I'm going to go and check some reviews about it. Mm -hmm. So you've then made a the review and people see yours on YouTube and people buy from the link below your video and you can hijack other people's traffic and that's how you make money pretty much out of thin air. So if anyone's interested, you can have a look there and I promise you it works. But it, it yeah. is a lot of graft. It is a lot of work, to be honest. It's not, yeah. You're not just going to sit there for 20 minutes like the promise on these videos. It yeah. takes me like six, six, seven hours in a day to make a bonus page and then get it all finalized and make my emails to send out. So yeah, it is a lot of work, but it's free and it's mm -hmm. money from fresh air. Wow, and that's a good point that no matter what people promise, if it's, I mean, if, if the person is being genuine, they'll be honest about how much work is involved. And yeah. only when... People say, oh, it's going to be easy. You need to be a bit careful. But yeah. that, so that, that brings us back to the, the platform that is YouTube. Yes. YouTube is, is huge right now. Yeah. <clears throat> as, a, as a YouTuber yourself, do you, how long do you see YouTube's dominance <clears throat> continuing? 
Well, I think it's going to go on for. I, I don't think it really has any any problems right now. I don't think it really has many competitors. Um, it's kind of like a Netflix. I know people who have. I mean, I have one myself. We have the digital box here. I have two thousand channels. I have movies, the cinemas, the, you know, the, the pay for pay per view. I have everything. And I pretty much just watch YouTube all the time, watch different <laughs> things, you know, because yeah, yeah. you can literally select what, who you want to watch and what you want to watch, which is yeah. fantastic. So I don't really think it is as many competitors. And what I like about YouTube is uh, YouTube actually wants to pay you. So they, they don't make it hard for you to get paid. The two things you need to, uh, you need to achieve is, uh, let me think, you need 1,000 subscribers. Mm -hmm. and 4,000 minutes of watch time. After that, you're the, you're then qualified to start getting paid by YouTube. Now, once you hit those two targets, it's important to remember, you don't just get paid right away. You have mm -hmm. to then verify your account, which that can take about three months. But mm -hmm. while you're going through that process, you are still making the money. It just, you don't get paid it until you've verified your account. Mm -hmm. um, but I mean, you can go on each month and see the money ticking up, ticking up, ticking up from your ads, which is great. Mm -hmm. uh, the minute you get verified, the money's straight to your account, which is... Mm -hmm. It's fantastic. So the good thing with YouTube, they actually want to pay you. Mm -hmm. um, you just have to keep people on your channel. That's it. Mm. But at the same time, you know, you and I, we remember Friendster, remember Friends United. We remember yeah. all the <laughs> other platforms that are just memories. Yeah. And within recent times, I mean, there was Snapchat. Yeah. Uh, but you now we have TikTok. Yeah. So sometimes they just come out of nowhere. Do So... Do you think what what about other podcast channels? What about like yep. iTunes <clears throat> and Spotify? Do you recommend that or do you use nah, them? Not really. I, I actually don't use them myself, but I would yeah. I would recommend them all. Mm -hmm. So the more things you can build up, exactly like you said, you don't want to put all your eggs in one basket. You don't want to just make YouTube and then YouTube crashes one day or dies out like Blockbuster, you know, and then you're like, Oh, that was my that was my living. It took me five years to build that. Now, mm -hmm. now what, you know? You don't want to be doing that. So it, you can build your um, your social media platforms uh, with each other. So whenever I do a YouTube video, I just say, don't for, at the very top, I put, you can also follow me here on Instagram. And then I include the link from my Instagram. You can right. also follow me here on Facebook if you want to catch up. Mm. I include the link from Facebook. You can check out my daily Snapchats to keep up to date. Mm. But, you know, if you, like, you can do that. I don't really have a Snapchat, but, you know, I'm just giving you an idea. <clears throat> You can do those things. You can put them all there and you can grow them uh, at the same time. Mm -hmm. uh, interaction is also key with these type of platforms. So people just think, oh, I put a cool video on and that's it. It's fine. You, you, you actually, you really need to interact with people. So you, you mm -hmm. like comments, you reply. You're never going to reply to everyone once it gets mm -hmm. so big. But is, if you can reply, then you should reply. Just, hey, mate, thanks very much. I appreciate it. All these mm -hmm. small things make a huge difference algorithmically. Um, and these platforms, see, oh, notice, oh, this guy is like... Um, Mm -hmm. This fact is, he really communicates with his, uh, he interacts well with his, uh, his subscribers, his followers, blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. And they then start to promote your page more for you, even though you don't know it, but you're like, why am I getting all these followers? Um, and it just keeps rolling and rolling and rolling. Um, <clears throat> so my Instagram has also shot up now. Instagram, you don't get paid from it, like you get paid mm -hmm. uh, from YouTube, but what you do get from Instagram is you get a lot more uh, endorsement. So people are like, hey, can I send you a pair of boots and you just, you make a review on them or you wear them in your videos? Yeah, sure, no worries. Can I send you a new bag? Can I send you a camel bag for your wall? Yeah, can I send you a new tent? You get loads of really good uh, things from uh, Instagram, which is fantastic. Hmm. And in terms <laughs> of these various platforms, obviously you do your videos your content is in Bahas Indonesia <clears throat> do you intend at any point to expand to other markets as well um it's <clears throat> a great question mm -hmm. so for now I think most of the foreseeable um it will be uh like Bahas Indonesia however we mm -hmm. have had some things come up where for example my friend Panji who I mentioned earlier he's like the Indonesian Steve Urban so he has a huge thing Cobra he's yeah wrestlers, alligators, rescues them from traps and, you know, blah, blah, blah. Wow. So he's really a fantastic guy. Mm -hmm. So he's got his own TV show now called Taman Panji, which basically means Panji and Friends, and he does loads of crazy wildlife stuff. Right. Um, he was being pitched and kind of sold off, if you like, to National Geographic, and National Geographic will love him. Wow. But 
he can't speak a word of English. Uh, you know, uh, pretty so that's much. where you come in. And that's exactly it. So yeah. my wife and I went and met uh, uh, one of the, the executive director. And he was right. like, look, I have this for you. Would you be interested in this type of show, which is an Indonesian type show? I was like, I would love to have my own show like that. And he then said, well, look, what about Nat Geo? And he explained, look, Nat Geo love Panji, but they can't take him because he can't speak English. He said, my idea was to team mm-hmm. you and Panji up because you're friends anyway. And, and then the both of you go with Nat Geo. And then he can do the Bahasa, you can do the English. So that then would then open the, the door up, if you like, from like you said, to, to branch out across that, which would be fantastic. But of course, that's had the brakes smashed on because of Corona and yeah. COVID nineteen. <laughs> but it's still there, you know. But that that's pretty cool. That's their plan for us, basically. Wow, that's amazing. So yeah, thank you very much for your time. I appreciate it. I uh, appreciate insights into how you got to where you where you are and what you see happening in the future. And of course, we continue to follow you as well on the awesome. that you mentioned. And we'd all we'd probably put it in our <laughs> notes underneath the video. They Thank you. Mention. Yeah, thanks very much, bro. It was Thank a great speech for you. Thank you for the invitation. Take care, Dan. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye bye.